Eventing has been the hardest hit category in business to date by COVID-19. Prior to the lockdown, event tech startup Hala was on a J-curve trajectory of growth. Shai Evian, the cocky and contagiously enthusiastic CEO of Hala, has agreed to share with us just how his startup is responding to the crisis. There you go. They, they are, now you look good, bro. You got a little bit of like a, a, a there's some light, sh, some artistic light shining on your, on your, on the board. Yeah, yeah. I, I, now I've got my like creative lighting crystal, going on here. You're crystal. <laughs> you are, you're an events guy. So, you know. You sure. Have, so check here. This guy, every morning I kind of put another piece of gear on him just to get him excited for the weekend, you know. Oh, right, bro. He's That's my, so cool. He's my Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> slowly going crazy yeah a little bit little bit well, it's kind of almost like those little notches on the the jail cell wall you know <laughs> yeah this is my wilson i like that dude how are you doing you're an events guy and uh we're not allowed to be running events what the hell <laughs> yeah that is um it's a good question uh i'm actually really good eh? to be honest um i think you know we've the last six weeks have been yeah, a complete roller coaster, um, but I'm really kind of proud of the way that we've handled the situation as best as we can. I'm feeling quite good this morning. Good. Well, you look good, my man. I, okay, so, so let's just, I mean, the, the obvious question is, dude, on a spectrum, right? Like you've yeah. got, on the one end of the spectrum, you've got people who deliver online content, right? They're not affected at all. And then you get people who pretty much base their life on human interaction where people are, you know, by the very nature of what they do, i.e. monster concerts and yeah. festivals, like, you know, they're, they're in a closer proximity than one and a half meters and, yes. and more than likely being pushed up against each other. You know, you're on that extreme, dude. Like you are on the ultimate extreme of people being affected and what are some of the practical things that you've done in order for, for you to pivot and, and see some silver lining out of this? I think what's really interesting is that we are really playing in a truly global space at the moment, especially if you're online, because there's no boundaries or limits in terms of access to people. You know, I've seen a lot of um, events similar to yours where, you know, you're getting international speakers, which traditionally would be very difficult to get because I'd have to come to South Africa, you know, so this whole online um, environment has really, you know, removed the barriers, I think, to access to people and to, to speakers. The reality is that I think people are stuck in this, um, in this space where you can't do anything, right? Now, that's not the truth. You, you, you know, everyone who started a business, whether it's been a restaurant, whether it's been an event, you started at a place where you were, you know, unknown, you know, you were hustling, you know, you, and I think you have to go back to that mentality of a complete startup, you know, reset environment where you, you know, you've got to kind of throw what you know out the window and really kind of, you know, reinvent yourself or think about, you know, if I was starting again, how would I do this? You know, and I think it's the, I was saying it to some friends or someone I was talking the other day that like after years and years of being in business, finally we were seeing our own light, you know, like we were at that point where we've had our, our teams, our processes, our system structures, like we had gotten through the tunnel and that light was there and then that door just got shut again, you know, and I think it's, yeah, the, you need to, just put the past behind you like you know nobody can can um it's no, no one's fault i think that's the the we all i'm not gonna say all in the same boat we're all in different boats in the same sea but you know you're everyone's affected in this and don't have pity for yourself and and the sooner you can just put kind of what's be, what's happened behind us and look forward to the future they just need to try and do things i mean we've really done a lot of things in the last kind of six weeks which you know, have broken the rules of how we'd normally operate our business. And, and what would typically take months and years to put together, we're like turning around in, you know, in overnight or in weeks. And I think what's been 
so incredible to see is the collaboration amongst uh, the industry, even competitors, you know, um, normally where it's just a no-go zone. So like, it's, uh, the, I'd say the advice is, is to really just try and, 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 and do things and not get stuck in this, I'm a victim, you know? Um, I think it's just, it's an attitude, it's a, it's a mind frame. I think once you, once you change that, because, you know, you, anybody who started a business and has been relatively successful has gone through that kind of, you know, the, from the, the ground up and just take yourself back to that place where you, when you started, you know? That's gold. Thank you, dude. I, I like that. Take yourself back to the place that you, you were, or the person that you were when you started your business. I think that's an amazing nugget of advice. You know, the, the thing for us is we want to retain what we have so that when this thing turns back on, we actually still have a business. And what we've done, which has been unbelievable, and I really implore anybody else to think this way, is instead of just cutting salaries or um, the way that a lot of people are doing it is, you know, we did a, a staff deduction across the board, but we actually put it, are putting it into to a future employment equity option, you know, so that the contribution that the staff are making, because look, we need money, that's the bottom line, um, but the, the sacrifice they're making is going into a future um, option, you know, which is really, I mean, the, has kept people, you know, engaged, has, you know, we, we, ha we haven't had downtime from a work perspective, like we really try to see how can we use this also from our people to, focus on the future and I, and I know a lot of companies just think about let's just slash right now focus on kind of the the, the short term but people are I think also unaware of those impact that it has on the long term of the business um, so something also that's really you know has, has worked out well look you know for us naturally we wanted to see how we could use our current platform um, to support our existing clients um, and that being now more like um, DJs, performers, artists, um, give them a platform to, to do online events and streaming. I think what's been really interesting, we've, the streaming world's just kind of blown up in the last uh, couple of weeks. And what we kind of looked very early on is that everything was happening on Facebook and YouTube. And um, for the most part, for free, you know, people are just doing free DJ streams or free courses or, or whatever it might be. And the reality is that's not sustainable for the future. You know, it's great while we're in lockdown because we can, it's great content and we can get fans and followers and all that stuff. But knowing that this thing is not going to end anytime soon, you know, we forecasting maybe end of the year events will come on, maybe next year. Like it's just, we can't see it happening anytime soon. And that we need to, we need to find a way that we can actually empower um, organizers and event and promoters and DJs and musicians to actually earn a, a living for the future. So what we've done is, what's been a real big focus of ours is taking our platform and how can we take what we do in an offline space, just but bring it online, uh, where we can enable you to host an event online, fully gated, you know, where it's not on social media, we can control the audience, um, you can sell tickets, you can accept donations, you know, you can really own that space um, and that's really kind of been where a big focus of ours has been uh, because there's hundreds of platforms that you can do free stuff but what's what's the next step you know and that's the i think our mentality has, has been that and i think very true to our values which has been really you know amazing to see it like you know you talk about values but then to actually see how it really comes out and you know from a our hall of values are um be human and give a fuck um you know like literally that's what we put up on all our <laughs> that is um, so beautiful <laughs> you know, and, and we're, really technology, cool. we're a technology company but actually at the core we humans everything we, what you know what we do behind the scenes you know are it's the, the human beings that are running it you know we're about emotion connection experience like that's really uh, so i think really understanding your values first is i think important before you know, you, you venture into whatever that next thing is, because this really is also an opportunity for you to reset your mind and, or, you know, you might've been in a business that actually, fuck, I don't, why was I doing that? You know, where you can really re reinvent yourself. Yeah, I dig it. And it goes back to your thing around the mindset. And dude, you do have a very spectacular mindset. I have a very, uh, 
I've, I've got a very um, fond memory of, of you in a wolf suit at the final, <laughs> the final pitch at the Techstar session when, uh, when, you, you, when everyone else is kind of dressed up in their ties and their finest and you came on to the stage in a big red wolf suit howling like crazy. So I'm seeing that same attitude now and loving it and, um, and all the best, my man. And, and hopefully we can collaborate and help you. In, in some Thank, way, you. Thank you. But obviously that came to a hard stop. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a Zoom interview. It's okay. It yeah, goes. Cool. I, I mean, you're probably not wearing any underwear, like underneath. I like, actually am. You're, I'm you're, you're right. naked from the waist down. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. Well, I'm at good. Least, at least you, you're half decent. That's cool. Yeah, but it's uh, the. So, what was the question? <laughs> before you, before you continue, yeah. would you mind uh, kindly tilting your screen somewhat? Because I'm kind of getting yeah. this. This hilarious, um, what's that cartoon character with the guy who kind of puts his, you, you know what I mean? Like S S Nimrod was here or something. Kill Kilroy was here. <laughs> you and you, that guy who puts his head, his head over the wall. So I'm literally getting your nose. 